Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Community Matters, and like in the fullest extent, you know, what is a community anyway? It's a, it's a group of people that have some, some sort of common bond who live together and enjoy things together and suffer together, and they have their life experience together. And the community is like the, the essential group for humanity. I haven't thought about it, but when I'm with uh, Hema Kubera, I think of things like this. That more specifically is Hema Kubera del Barrio. Um, <laughs> Buenas tardes, Emma. Buenas, How are you? Buenas tardes, Jay. Muy bien. Jay Fidel. You have a Spanish um, last name, at least for me. I always say Fidel. Yeah, well, okay. Well, in, uh, in the Caribbean, it was really important. Yes, it, it, I think it still is. But anyway, Emma's a filmmaker, if you didn't know that. And uh, we're going to talk today about pathways for filmmakers. You know, I, I was thinking at first, pathways to the stars, but um, <laughs> the, the filmmakers are in their own way, the stars, you know, that's the point. And uh, so we're gonna talk about pathways for filmmakers here today. So first, uh, a little bit of background. Um, Emma is from, what, Madrid originally? Am I right about that? Yeah, a small town north of Madrid called Medina del Campo, but yeah, that, around that area, the center of Spain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and somewhere along the line, she became fascinated with creativity and filmmaking and and of course uh, at least uh, for Hema that that means uh, taking a different view of life than most of us so let me let me just get right to that Hema your view of life is different um how is it different what is it can you articulate that well um i i see life with a lot of filters i have a picture of of mine when i was like 6 years old in my father's hometown, wearing these sunglasses. I love the picture because it informs me about how I needed glasses and lenses to see things, even when I was a kid. Um, it's very difficult for me to see reality. I, I live kind of a little bit in a fantasy world sometimes. <laughs> so no wonder that I choose to make documentary films because yeah it's all about reality, but still you tell the story through your lens. Well, what is reality? Reality is different for different people. I, I suppose there's a continuum there. There's the ones who are absolutely realistic and, and you know, boring, <laughs> sorry. And there's the ones who are out there, you know, in a fantasy world, uh, interpreting reality in a, in a kind of organic way. And uh, I would put you on, way on this side. But I suppose there are people in the middle who can appreciate both sides of it. And, and, and uh, at least at some of the time, they can be a little, a little in the fantasy world. I think the beauty of film is an documentary is that reality to me is, is connection, is, is, um, is connecting through emotions, through sound, through ear, um, through touch. And uh, I, I'm not very successful at doing it in my personal life sometimes, but I think I have kind of like a little bit of a gift to do it through film. <laughs> <laughs> Touching people through film. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, do, you, do you want to send the same takeaway message each time or is it different each time? Well, you know, how would you like your, your viewer you know, to react? Would you I like think... him to come into your reality, your fantasy world? What, what would you like to change in him? So every time I find a story that I want to dive in, and for me, it's a deep dive because it takes me whatever it takes me to make a film. Um, I consider each film like a universe. So I go in and I have a, an idea sometimes of what it might be, but what I love about what I do is that I, it forces me to be flexible to be in constant connection with reality, with if I'm making a film about you, I need to find out who you are, what is your essence? And then with the collaboration of my team, not just the characters, not just the people that I interview, but also my editor, my cinematographer, everything that happens, the people that facilitate the story, I need to be really adapting and and being flexible so i feel like film allows me to kind of like work on myself you know like when you invited me to 
to talk about the past in filmmaking. I was talking to my mother in Spain today and I said, oh my goodness, the path to filmmaking is, I would say that is like, there is this expression in the Bible, I think it is like the ways of God are mysterious. <laughs> and I just felt like <laughs> I could say the same thing about film. It's like the paths are so, you know, there is a business side to it. There is an art side to it. There's a language of cinema that is there but the paths are so very different for everybody. And to me, I feel like um, what I do helps me see reality. Even though I express it through a medium that is a lot about dreams and about, um, you know, uh, the magic of cinema. Indeed, it is magic. <laughs> so, so how would you like to change me by your movies? How would you like to open my consciousness? How would you like me to see the world differently, you know, by watching your movie? You know, sometimes people ask me, what kind of films do I do make? And I said, I'm no, I don't know. You tell me. Um, I think one of the challenges that I've had in hindsight, and when I talk to some of my friends is that my films don't fit easily in boxes. And that has been a difficulty that I face because I get a lot of rejection also because of that rejection from the, you know, festivals, from funders. But they're I find all wrong, like, you know, they're all totally wrong. When they no, reject. no, it's just how it is. You know, they are like <laughs> things and they're important things in the world. And sometimes for me, I think I've made films that are very, I love the stories that I tell and the people whose stories I tell. But I think um, I like multi-layer stories. Um, for me, a successful comment after somebody watching a film is like, oh, the film stayed with me for three days. Oh, I woke up and I had a dream about that film. Oh, I thought I hated bullfighting, but then after I watched the film, Ella es el Matador, I just didn't even know what to say. I'm not a filmmaker that is gonna give you answers, but I hope that when you go to see the film, your world will open up to something that is already there, but that you get to experience it through emotions and through the beauty of the language of cinema. I am very lucky to work with really amazing my editor is fantastic, Kion Lee, the composers that I've worked with, everybody that I work with, I'm very like. How, how do you select them? What are you looking for in them? A sensitivity, flexibility, a skill, of course. And more and more as I go, as I grow old, that they're good people. Because I've had all kinds of experiences. <laughs> That's the film. business side, right? There is a lot, a lot of ego. So if you give me, okay, somebody that has really good intention, maybe not, doesn't know everything about something, but is going eager to learn it, I will pick that person. But I'm also, when, with my team, I, I always expect the best, you know? I, I work with very talented people that add to my craft, you know, my films, I'm finishing now uh, a feature length film that I've been working on for eight years. Eight years. I say this a lot uh, to them. I'm very difficult sometimes because I'm very much of a perfectionist. So I would not give up until I will make any change I need to make. And once I finish the film, I never touch it ever again. How do you know when it's finished? I know it, you know, it's like, um, I know it because I have maneuvered it so much. Like I have been like so much going through it, going through it, going through it. We've tried every single thing, but at some point I know like it's, it is what it is. And an amazing feeling that I've had with all the films that I've worked on is that when I start the film, it's like, I sense a story. When it ends, it's not the same story but when I watch it in the big screen, it is the essence of what I wanted to say. I don't know how to explain that, but it's an amazing film, uh, amazing feeling. And that happens because of the people that I work with. For instance, today is 
been an amazing day because um, as I said, I've been working on this film that has been titled Homecoming that now we're going to title The Island in Me. I haven't announced it yet. The um, Island in Me. Yeah. And Todd Sikafus, who is an amazing composer, just finished the last cue. And now my editor is putting it there. We're finishing the credits. And my films are where they are because of also all the beautiful collaboration of the people that, that hang in there. <laughs> then we thought I was like, we're talking about music. And I was just giving him like my, what I, like for the ending credits, I want something that, I don't want something like the beginning. I want something that will just be the memory of all the experiences that you've had through the end. And I just had to say that to him. And in less than a day, he just came with a, came out, out with something beautiful. Of course, he, he is brilliant. But also my, so, you know, I work, I look for people that are never going to give up, uh, that have um, sensitivity, of course, uh, a skill in the craft, and that they are good people. Because I think good people in the sense like uh, that they have um, integrity, that they can express their opinions. I always say, you tell me whatever you have to tell me. I, I will always decide because I'm the director, right? Producer, blah, blah, blah. But I want them to tell me because if you give the best in you, my film is going to be better. Well, <laughs> it strikes me that when you say you want them to go be good people, mm -hmm. there's another dimension to that. Uh, and that is um, living your own life you want to be surrounded, especially in your work, with people who are good people. It's a it's a question of taste. It's a question of how, what makes a better life for you. And maybe self-interested in that sense. You don't want people who are not good to be around you. You're going to be surrounded yeah. with goodness. It's interesting in that sense because I want I want them to have the freedom that they need to find you know their muse, but also. Um, the intention is to make the best film possible, right? Um, so, and hopefully everybody will benefit out of that, you know? So you got something in the mail today, Hema. Do you want to share with us what you got in the mail as a surprise today? Yeah, so last time I was with you, we had just premiered at the Hawaii International Film Festival. Then the pandemic hit, right, about now. I was in Spain, went to Spain, premiered there, then uh, the film Our Atlas Speaks has continued to travel through virtual film festivals. It's gone to, uh, we got an award at the Ocean International Film Festival in San Francisco, it was fabulous. Then the film went to WAM, the WAM International Film Festival. Um, we received the Grand Jury Award for Best Documentary Short. And today, I thought like, I want to check the mail because I knew that it was coming. And since you invited me, I was like, maybe we'll be lucky to share this. <laughs> so it, it arrived in the mail. I don't know if you can see it with the reflection, but this is the best documentary um, award from the WAM International Film Festival. Um, and I see the, the title of the film there in, in large letters, Our Atoll Speaks, no? Kotala Tala Maito Maito Wenua. Yeah, it's a film that is about, um, there you go, conservation practice, the beauty and power and strength and resilience and wisdom of the Puka Puka people and in terms of- I'm Sure, the island of Puka Puka, we spoke about it, yes. Yeah, so, and the film has also, you know, been to, continues to go to virtual film festivals. And one thing about this, career is that it's always changing. I mean, life reality is always changing, but so much with the pandemic, when they hit, a lot of things were canceled and others had to make the decision, do I wait? Do I just jump into this virtual world and see what happens? Uh, I took it as an experiment and it's been a really beautiful surprise. The film has gone to Tahiti, the FIFO International, uh, Tahiti Film Festival. And also, which is premiere in Australia. And of course, I couldn't go to any of those places. I hope that I will be able to go with my next film. But um, the beauty of the pandemic is like with Australia, we premiered at the Melbourne Women in Film Festival, and I couldn't go. 
But then I thought, well, there is this beautiful Puka Pukan family that is from Melbourne uh, that they can go in for, for me. So I invited Lynn and, and Malina to go to the premiere and they've represented their film. And so anyway, another thing about filmmaking is like, uh, I mean, this is nothing new, but just we have to always be open to what might happen. It's a very- well, that particular film, you know, you, you found um, a, a gem and a, and a little tiny precious gem in the middle of nowhere. And not everybody has a chance to go to Puka Puka or even know about it. And you, and you chose that because it was, I guess, at least in part, because it was remote and largely unattainable by mostly most of us. And, and you shared that. It was a sharing thing. You found the essence, but you also shared. And I, and I find that really uh, a big part of, of at least the way I perceive filmmaking to happen to be of value. But I want to I I tell you about something I did in preparation for our discussion today. I went back to early days of think tech, really early days. And um, a friend of mine put me in touch with a fellow named Fred Weissman, W-I-S-E-M-A-N. Weissman is a, an acclaimed filmmaker. Um, I'm not sure that it's documentary, probably is. Um, and he's a, he's a law graduate. He went to Yale Law School and he taught law after that. And one day he decided he had to go to his next chapter and find more. So he became a filmmaker. And one of the early films he did, probably in, he's, he's kind of senior now, uh, one of the early films he did was something called Titicut Follies, and uh, which is an absurd name for a film about a, um, a, uh, an asylum for the criminally insane. Mm. And, and they let him in. Nobody could get in. He got in, probably because he was a lawyer and all that. And he spent weeks and weeks and weeks interviewing people. They let him do it. Nice. And he had clips everywhere. This is before electronic films, you know, mm. clips everywhere. Mm. And he spent a year, year, no, I, I should say many years evaluating each one of these clips and trying to put those elements together into a meaningful film. And he did, you know, and he won awards with it. And I wonder what the comparison is between that kind of approach, what happened to Weissman. He's made like 40 films. Um, but what it is with, with you, I mean, do you, do you, you go to, I guess you do in, in going to Puka Puka, you go to a place nobody can go, and you take a lot of film, and then you develop a concept, then you take the film and you put it together in such a way so that it represents poetically what you personally have found. Am I right? How do you yes, do that? and what's coming up for me as we're talking is, yes, I totally connect, connect with what you're saying. And in this case, Puka Puka is called a uh, remote island. Um, you know, we're all connected by water. So the concept of remote is very controversial because we are connected, right? But, but when you said that, I thought I always enter remote islands, <laughs> even, even when it's like bullfighting, for instance. <laughs> like it's, it's a world that has not been um, treated with film. So, and there is an immersion that needs to happen. What's happened to me, my first films were films that I found in the news, you know, and I, I am trained, I'm a trained journalist, so I know all about the ethics of journalism. And that helps, doesn't it? Very much so. I love coming from journalism. Mm -hmm. But um, the shift that I've seen in me is that, that my last three films have not been films that have, that I found in the news. Uh, when I did Automatic Cake, I knew Otto, and of course Otto is very popular in Hawaii, but I had to spend, go and spend time with him, and it, I worked on that film for like five years. This was the Cheesecake Man. Yeah, so <laughs> it was like, you know, I have to get to know him, and I, I don't know how, you know, and not every filmmaker is like that. There are some filmmakers that go they know how to cut a scene. There's like three clips, you know, 30 seconds, two seconds, da, 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 da. And I have some friends that I'm like, why don't you do it that way? <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know. I have to go and be with Otto and just film for until it's the process is everything for me. In the process, the story arises for me. And then my editor, bless her heart, you know, 
it's like helps me with put, putting together the story. Uh, with uh, Puka Puka, there was is a film is an is a place in the world that has never been documented in film. It's hardly in the newspaper. Google it. You can even find how to get there. So I got into the story because uh, of a very personal connection. You'll find out when the island in me comes out. So these two beautiful women, Johnny Frisbee, who was in the show, and Amelia Borowski, who I know very deeply and personally. And that's why I got in there. But when I got in there, the first five weeks I was there, I realized this is not enough for me. It's not enough for me to be here for five weeks. The place was so rich that in two years later, I had to go back and live there for five months and really get it in my body. I will always be an outsider and that's okay. All my life, I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider in Spain. It's like, but they really welcome me like in such a generous way. And I live, go there, I live there. I even got injured there. They took care of me. It was, Amazing. And out of all that, I think that is reflected in the film. For me, is the film about you? I will be in the film too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I never thought I would, but now no, I, I must not. see it. But it's not about me. It's about Amelia and Johnny and Puka Puka. But I had this kind of moral question like, um, I have a very co mm, intimate connection to the place. And when I go to festivals, sometimes it's like, what is a Spaniard doing here in this specific panel? And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> because I got there because of, of love, really. I went there and I fell in love also with the place. And you know, the beautiful thing is that when people see the films, they the comments that I'm getting is like, they see the love in them. And to me, um, it's not a rational way of doing it but it's my way of doing it. I don't know, maybe maybe from now on, I'll do other films, I'll, I'll be hired by Netflix and I could just do films that are click, 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 click. But um, until now, it's just this process of, yes, like the filmmaker that you're talking about, emerging, submerging myself, taking this deep dive and see what's there. And of course, in the end, I'm a journalist, right? So I work with objectivity, like with balancing the stories, every, all of that. But in the end, it's through my lens. Yeah. It's almost as if the, the, the clips of film that you take over that period of time are your paint. They are your paint. Mm. And you mix them up and you put them on the canvas and then you turn them around and turn them around and turn them around until they finally meet your the lessons you have learned in taking them in the first place you know i love talking with you uh jay because you're so deep and i don't mean that in a i i really mean this you know when i this this film that is coming up you'll see that i'm in the film but it's really never about me i think i do watch every film that i've made it's about somebody else, right? It's about this film in Matadors. It's about automatic cake and his roller coasters and his cheesecake. It's about Puka Puka. It's about these two women, but they are reflections of me. I really, it's, it's like, it's kind of an amazing thing. It's, we're all mirrors, you know? Like I'm not a female Matador, but I, I am, you know? Like at the end of the movie when when Carla Gutierrez put in the film this quote, um, oh, well, because when I interview Eva, she said it's like she, Eva gives up at the end bullfight and she says she's painting. And she will, she says, I will, I will keep fighting other bulls. Yes, I will. That's me. Yes. That's you. Yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. So <laughs> You know, but um, so I do, but it's also not about me. It's about something larger. It's sure. about something. I think film helps me to transcend things, experiences. Yes. The larger part, the larger you. And each film is a, it's kind of a, an expansion of your own life experience. So you've made a lot of films. Uh, it strikes me that, you know, the subject is always 
way different. <laughs> there's there's yeah. no two of them that are really alike in any way. And, and I suppose that's a the sort of a mission of yours is to explore the corners, different corners all the time. And the question now, this is a hard one now. Are you ready for a hard question? Let's try. Okay. Which one is your favorite film? Oh my God. I, you know, I love, I love all of them. I really do. Uh, when you watch a film that you've worked on for 10 years, five years, seven years, eight years. I mean, because I get to work with uh, beautiful people and I get a product, I think uh, a, a piece of art, whatever you want to call it, a film that is just like, I don't want to change anymore, you know? Um, I feel like when I watch them again, I go through like a memory of that life everything that happened you know so i really love i don't say this to not have to choose one i really say, i watched uh, yes El matador recently on a zoom event that happened here in la with the um the spanish consulate and maripaz was there on zoom and they asked me would you change anything 12 years later and i said no and Maripat, they asked Maripat, would you change anything 12 years later? And she said, no. Whoa. That's a so, statement. Uh, so I really love every film that I've made, you know, and, um, but they get um, more layer, more layer and. <laughs> they change. Well, I was going to ask, for example, you know, you have a character in a film. And, you know, I mean, I observed this a lot in my television watching, which is, these days is too much, but that's COVID, so I forgive myself. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the best ones are the ones where there's a dynamic, where people change, as they do in life. And, and you can see it and enjoy it, and you can uh, put yourself in the shoes of that person who is changing, as you are. And so, um, and so you change, don't you, Emma? Yes, yes. Um, everything changes, right? Like reality is always changing, whether we like it or not. Now we've had a really good test of it with a pandemic. We start as a film, you have an idea, the idea changes. The characters, the lives of the characters change, your life changes. When you get it to an audience, the audience will make it their own. It's no longer yours. You know, the impact of the film is beyond you. Yeah, and it goes to a thing we talked about a little while ago is what do you want to achieve? Well, in some tiny perceptible way, you want them to change. I want them to be inspired in a way, like, and not through, not through me and my work, but like, I want them to be like, to connect with another human. You know, like when you watch Automatic Cake and see Otto, and you see all, all his values, you know, and just his, his creativity and his um, ability to be happy and enjoy himself. I want you to be like, oh my God, yes, you could see life with a, a glass full or empty. You know, I choose to uh, see it full, you know, <laughs> and he's like, Yes, I think I can learn from him, you know. <laughs> With Ellas El Matador, I'll, you know, I'll keep fighting other bulls and I want to make a contribution to the world, like Maripat says. I, do we want to do that? You know, it's like, I, it doesn't matter what you do. It just, you don't have to be a bullfighter. You don't have to be a famous person, a celebrity. But I want, I think, um, I think inspire somebody that you will see some a story that is so human that you will be like, you know, that's okay. I went through, she went through that really hard time. I can connect with her because I was there. I want to humanize the stories. Does that make sense? Yes, find humanity, a, 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 noble, a noble mission. So where, where are you going, Emma? <laughs> well, where am I going? Um, I... I hope to continue in the path that I am. I, I, in terms of my films, I hope that they continue to reach an audience. Um, 
Yes, and Matador just screen again after 12 years. Our adult speaks, I want to do an impact campaign, take it into the school system that is available uh, widely uh, in the education system. Big idea, but little by little. Um, um, now I'm finishing the island in me. I, I hope it also has a life. And for me, I really, one of the most important things for me is um, personal growth. Like if anybody that knows me personally or lovers that I've had or like, it's like, it's kind of a pain because I'm always have this thirst for growth, you know? And sometimes it's a little bit like limitless. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, I get like a lot of, I have to deal with a lot of challenges. So I hope things, I, th I hope I continue to do what I'm doing professionally but that it gets a little bit easier and that I continue to enjoy my life. I really think that regardless of the obstacles, my path moving forward is to keep working, doing beautiful things and hopefully, hopefully you know, just enjoy my life. I mean, it sounds very self-serving, but well, that is that I, a lot so, of people. <laughs> suppose I took it away from you. Suppose mm -hmm. I said, look, Starting on Monday, no more films. That's it. Oh. Could you develop in the same way? You know, I've tried to give up because I've been in moments that I was so frustrated and it was not easy. And I'm like, is this a sign that I should give up? It hasn't worked yet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, forget that idea. <laughs> no, it hasn't worked yet, but you know, life will tell me. Yeah. I hope I hope I can continue doing it. I hope you know a few things with fundraising get a little bit easier so it doesn't take me years and years and years and years. Um but um I really you know, if I had, if, sometimes I said like, God, in my next life, I want to be a, just make bread, you know, have a shop, make, get up in the morning, make bread, sell it. I'm not minimizing making bread, it's hard work. But just something that will be like more immediate, you know, more necessary, you know, like essential. Because uh, Sometimes this this filmmaking business is just very very difficult. So I've thought oh, yeah. about opening it up, yeah, but I haven't. I don't want to really. I got it. So suppose <laughs> now, suppose now, um, I'm a young aspiring filmmaker. Maybe I have a little experience. I mean, a lot of people do with the technology these days. Yeah. Um, and here you you really have been around the block, and you have found so much in it and you have created so much with it so here i am seeking your advice mm. here in our half hour of of, of intense mm. conversation <laughs> I love what it. is your advice Emma? my advice you know i've had the opportunity uh in hawaii to teach at Winwood community college in some of the classrooms at the university of hawaii and i always say Directing is overrated. <laughs> um, don't give it up, but learn a craft, learn a skill, become a camera person, an editor, a sound person, learn the craft so you can actually pay your bills, um, make it functional, you know. Also, when you're telling your stories, find things from the heart, things that you can, that will feed you regardless of what happens. Because filmmaking, somebody told me years ago, is like agriculture. And it's so true. And I, at the beginning, I'm like, what do you mean filmmaker is not agriculture? It's all about the technology. No, it's like, you never know what, when you plant your seed, what's gonna happen. It could be wasted. It could like grow and be shiny and very fruitful. But in the end, regardless of what happens with the external world, if you happy, if you're happy, I always ask my students, are you happy with it? 
Like, and I don't mean in a shallow way. I mean, like, could you live with it? If you can live with it, that will sustain you. So for me, it's like, learn a craft. Don't give up on, tell your stories. Find time to tell your stories. And also surround yourself with other beautiful things in your life. It's essential. You know, it's just don't expect, because this world is a lot about external recognition and it's crushing. But if you surround yourself with things that you love, that will feed you and that will sustain you. And if it's meant to be for you, it will be, you know, and if not, you will enjoy it and it will not kill you. Yeah. <laughs> There's always nutrition there. So, so Hema, where can I see your films? Do you give me at least an opportunity to see some of them. Where can I go? What can I do to see your films? Um, you know, I I am in the process right now of putting all my films on the web on Talqual Films. Uh, they're not there yet, but um, I'm working on it. Um, one of my films, um, Ella es el Matador, is distributed by Women Made Movies. So you can go to Women Made Movies and it's on Vimeo in their channel. It's also on my Talqual Films page. You can just go to the page and you can actually go to the link there. Um, Auto Marie Cake um, I, and Our Atelier Speaks, I, I need to put them on my website. So I would say just Talqual Films, sign up, and then as soon as it's up, you will be able to know. Um, and What's the, Island in me, the Island in Me is, uh, I'm now waiting to see where it will premiere. So maybe I can come back to you in a few months and say, hey, this is how you can watch all these films. <laughs> oh, okay. I want that. What's taqua mean? Taqua means as it is. It's a ah, really okay. sweet expression in Spain. Oh, I could say, oh, Jay is taqual. It's just natural, kind of like it doesn't have a mask. It, just, it presents itself. It means as it is. You know, Hema, we've, we've met a couple of times before on Think Tech. And, uh, you know, we talk about how people change and all that. And you do. And I'm always more overpowered than I was the last time. But I'm reminded of a French, a friend, old French statement, you know, uh, plus ça change, which you are certainly changing, and plus le même, which you are, you have a foundational solidarity, which is why I like you so much. Mm. Thank you, Emma. I love Emma Cupero you. del Barrio, what a wonderful name. Thank you for Thank having you so me. Much. Yeah. Thank Aloha. you very much. Aloha.